Welcome to Get Sleepy, where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. As always, I'm your host, Thomas. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Marcellus will be reading this evening's story, where we'll witness the magic of sport. A spontaneous decision to play a game of basketball will bring two new friends together who otherwise might never have met. You don't need to be a lover of basketball or sports in general to appreciate this story and get a good night's rest from listening. Now then, the day is done, and with it, so too are any and all responsibilities you have to the outside world. This is your time to rest and recharge. So let go of any resistance to do just that. If it helps, then just bring your awareness to your breathing, feeling the air coming in and going out. Sense the areas of your body that are in contact with the mattress below. Feel where the body moves with the breath and where it remains still. As the air continues to flow gently in and smoothly back out, notice your body relaxing more and more with each exhale. If thoughts continue to pop up in the mind, don't stress it. That is completely normal, and it's not something you need to resist. Just simply acknowledge the thought but don't feel like you need to take any action whatsoever in dealing with it right now. Allow it to just fade away into the background. And if it's of importance, it will come back to you another time when you're better equipped to take care of it. Let this be your time, completely and fully, to take care of yourself and to simply relax. As you continue sinking into bed, let's turn to our story. We begin in a high school gym with a young man named Jaron. Jaron Coles was standing inside a gymnasium. But it wasn't just any gym. It was his gym. The floor was wooden and springy, with a few cracks here and there. Everything was just as he remembered it, from his middle and high school days. Jaron hadn't been back here since the last week before his high school graduation. He'd moved away for college, 
and had almost forgotten this place that used to be his home away from home. Now, he was a college sophomore. He'd gotten a rare three-day weekend and decided to visit his hometown. His parents had gone out for the evening and he was on the verge of taking a nap while the house was quiet. But then, he got the urge to visit the old court. He was pleased to find the doors unlocked, as he suspected they would be. Back in the day, his hunger to spend every free moment he could on the basketball court inspired him to learn the weekly gym schedule. It hadn't changed once in four years. There was a Saturday night pickleball session slated for two hours later that day. And Coach Larrington, the PE instructor, tended to come unlock the doors a few hours ahead of game time. That was so he wouldn't have to leave his weekend band practice to let the eager seniors inside. Basketballs, volleyballs, soccer balls, jump ropes, and all manner of equipment littered the ground. It was a floor prepared for the kids who would need a variety of activities to use up their energy. Larrington must not have bothered to clean up the chaos left behind by those who were in here the previous afternoon. Jaron picked up a jump rope. He nudged a soccer ball and a couple of bright orange plastic cones out of his way and stood still holding the rope. He explored the handles gingerly, feeling a sense of anticipation. It had been a while since he jumped rope, but he had to give it a try. He gently swung the rope high over his head and felt the cable come to rest on the back of his ankles. Adjusting his grip, he swung the cable up and over and jumped and jumped and jumped again. Four, five, six, seven, he counted. He missed number eight. He'd try again. He readjusted and swung. He jumped and jumped, getting into a good rhythm as his feet tapped the floor. Jaron stopped and smiled in triumph. He'd gotten 10 in a row. Now it was time for another 10. This time, he passed 10 and kept going. He made it to 15 and then 20. On and on, the rhythmic jumping continued all the way to 24. He was on a roll. Soon, he was creeping up on 33. He hit 40 and decided that that was enough with the jump rope. Jaron set the rope down, bent over, and let his hands find his knees as he breathed in deeply. Then he remembered that holding them up high was the proper way to help his lungs draw in more air. So, he straightened and stretched, 
resting his hands on the back of his head. After a few minutes of deep breathing, he looked around the gym again. He remembered the nights he would watch his sister play volleyball from the cold bleachers and how he would use the penny to scratch at the faded gray paint at his side. His eyes traced the rows of seats up to the black wall at the highest level. He focused on the painting of the Red Wolverine, the school's mascot in the center of the wall. It was a good mascot. His friend Ray had been the one to dress up in the rubber suit and jump around in a frenzy to stir up the crowd. His habit of brandishing the fake claws at the opposing team during halftime shows had almost cost him the job, but it was all in good fun. Jaron stretched and bent sideways, slightly curving his arms and spine. It felt good to use these muscles again. Then, He walked calmly over to a free throw line. A leather basketball was waiting. It was a good ball, not one of the lumpy rubber ones the little kids would kick across the court. It wasn't even one of the faded, peeling leather ones that looked like it had been a team favorite 10 years prior. This was game ball quality. Jaron picked it up, then dropped it, and grinned with pleasure as the ball sprung easily off the wooden floor and back up into his hands. He bounced it a couple more times, shuffled his feet, and twisted his body slightly. He caught the ball one last time and held it squared his feet with his shoulders, checked his hand placement, and then looked up to the goal. He shot in one smooth motion. He bent his knees and sprang upward without letting his feet leave the floor. Standing on the balls of his feet, With his legs locked in tight perpendicular form, he brought his bent elbow up to chest level. His right hand was in front and a bit to the left of his face. The ball was inside his palm. He raised them both up just slightly above his head and released before his arm was fully extended. The ball launched into the air in a perfect arc. Then, it plummeted down to the earth below. Swish. Nothing but net. It was a perfect shot. A wave of pleasure warmed Jaren's chest. It was an inexplicable feeling like the one he got when he was outside his parents' house, and the breeze hit at just the right temperature. The ball fell and bounced back toward him, almost like it was returning itself to him. Jaron didn't move. He caught it and repeated his formula. He let the ball drop, and bounced back into his hands. He shuffled his feet, squared them with his shoulders, checked his grip, bent his knees, and fired. This time, what he heard was more of a hollow boinging sound. It was a miss. The ball bounced off the rim. That was to be expected, 
since he hadn't taken time to practice for a couple of weeks. Mrs. brought a completely different feeling, kind of like when he was eating his uncle's mouth-watering black cobbler last Thanksgiving, and a juicy portion fell from his fork to the floor beneath the table. This time, Jaren had to leave the line and catch the ball before it traveled too far. He returned, and set himself up again. Then, he repeated the formula. Swish, bong, swish, swish, swish. There it is, he said, sighing with pleasure. Basketball had been his sport. He was almost as good at it as his sister was at volleyball. She helped carry her team to two state championships, her junior and senior years. The payoff was a choice scholarship. Coach Witt was always so hard on him when it came to making free throws. Often, they were the difference between winning and losing, he'd say. Coach would be laughing at my percentage now, Jaron chuckled to himself. He returned to the formula. Swish. Bong. Swish. It was a relaxing pattern, something he could lose himself in without thinking. It was just muscle memory and repetition, like washing dishes. Jaron was about to launch a final round of free throws when he heard a heavy metal door close at the far end of the gym. A newcomer had arrived, a lanky guy, dressed in shorts and a tank top, ambled onto the court. He paused at the baseline to change out of his street shoes into a pair of crisp basketball shoes. Jaron thought he wouldn't mind owning a pair of his own. The stranger walked past all the balls and toys on the ground without even sparing them a glance. His eyes were locked on Jaron. He was comfortable on a basketball court. Jaron could tell by the way he moved. Jaron returned to his free throws. He wasn't sure what this guy wanted, but he knew he'd find out soon enough. One on one, the newcomer said, as he approached half court. Jaron caught his rebound and turned back to face him. He shrugged and gave him a nonchalant expression. Sure, he said. The newcomer smiled and introduced himself as Jax. Jaron gave his name as well. Jax nodded and walked to the sideline where he slipped out of his backpack and placed it on the bleachers, not far from Jaron's bag. Jax walked back onto the court and picked up a ball lying just outside the three-point line. Let me warm up a bit, Jax said. Jaron nodded and told him it wasn't a problem. 
he hadn't finished warming up himself. He moved off the free throw line and began practicing his jump shot, layups, and fadeaways. He and Jax were about to compete for real. There was nothing on the line but Jaron still wanted to be as ready as possible to put his best foot forward. It was a matter of pride. He watched Jax as he practiced. This guy was good. He started by draining jumper after jumper, going around the world or around the perimeter of the three-point line. Then he switched to driving and shooting off his dribble, practicing crossovers, post-up fadeaways. Jaron couldn't see any flaws in his form or shot choices, and he handled the ball well. No carries or double dribbles. He never even walked or even lost the ball on tricky crossovers. This was going to be a game. After he'd worked up a light sweat, Jaron felt ready. Let's check up, he said. Jax nodded. Jaron gave him the game quality ball and told him to shoot to see who would get the ball first. If Jax made it, and Jaron didn't, he would start the game with the first possession. Jax squared up on the three-point line and shot. He made it. Jaron took a turn. He made it too. Jax smiled. Let's go again, I guess, he said. They both made their shots again. Go further out, Jaron suggested. Jax missed. Jaron didn't. It was his ball. Make it take it, Jaron asked. Jax nodded. This meant Jaron would keep possession of the ball each time he scored. Possession wouldn't go to Jax until he stopped Jaron and took the ball or Jaron made a mistake and turned the ball over. Ones and twos, Jax asked. Jaron agreed. Every shot below the three-point line would count as one point. Everything outside the line will count as two points. This was the best way to play. It made the game more interesting. Jaron passed the ball to Jax, and he returned it in the ritual checkup. And now the ball was live. Jaron lunged to his right and Jax followed him. He shifted his defensive stance to Jaron's right, but not too much just in case it was a feint. It was. Jaron dribbled the ball between his legs to switch to his left hand and charged left. Jax followed. Just as Jax began to cut off Jaron's leftward drive, Jaron switched hands again, this time dribbling the ball behind his back to his right. He dribbled sideways and stepped right one more time to create a bit more space and jump for a mid-range shot. Jax was just a little too late to block. The shot was good. 
Jax caught the rebound, passed the ball back, and complimented Jaren on his shot. Jaren nodded and checked up again. This time he dribbled forward, rocking left and then right and then left again. He wanted to keep Jax guessing. The movement wasn't enough to trick Jax, but Jaren hoped it would keep him too preoccupied to catch his real motive. Then, Jaren launched his whole body to the left, only he didn't move away from Jax. He came towards him. He was careful to keep the ball out of his opponent's reach. Jax didn't see it coming, but he was a good defender. He lined his body up with Jaren's at a sharp angle. He placed a hand on Jaren's hip to brace himself for the impact and made it harder for Jaren to move away. Jax knew the ball was out of reach, so he didn't waste his time or balance lunging for it. He kept his feet planted and waited for Jaren's next move. Jaren was already in motion, keeping the ball in his left hand. He half spun back towards his right, but it was another feint. He felt Jack's moving with him and sharply cut off the spin. He brought the ball back to the left and drove. Jax was cut off guard, but he was fast. He recovered almost in time to cut off the drive, but Jaren wasn't finished. He bounced the ball behind his back and switched to his right hand, shuffled his feet right, and then drove hard for the basket. Jax couldn't recover. It was an easy layup. Jaren returned to the top of the key. Nice point, Jax said. The word sounded mechanical. Jax was complimenting him, but his mind was on the game. He hadn't given up. Jaren checked the ball and started again. He scored two more times before Jack stopped him on the fifth possession with a strong block. Jax took possession, dribbled the ball behind the three-point line, and fired. Swish. What are we going to? He asked calmly, as if he weren't losing. Fifteen, Jaren suggested. Jax agreed. He checked the ball and immediately drove. Jaren followed, but Jax stopped on a dime and hopped backwards, keeping his dribble live. He created at least two feet of space between them and was behind the three-point line again. He fired. The ball went in. They were tied. The game continued. Both players were good in their own ways. Jax was a stronger shooter, and he handled the ball well enough to consistently catch his defender off guard and take open shots. Jaren was a shifty ball handler. He created perfect angles to drive the ball in for a layup or a jump shot. They both made their shots almost every time they got a decent opening, so they quickly realized putting up a strong defense was the key for either player to win. 
it was game point. Jaren and Jax were tied. It was Jaren's ball. At this point, both players were tired. They'd shown each other their best moves, and they'd been running hard for 15 minutes. Jaren was right-handed. Jax had figured that out early in the game and generally expected him to go right. But he also knew by now that Jaren wasn't afraid to go left and he could finish a point with his left hand almost as easily as he could with his right. Which way would Jaren go? He dribbled right. Jack stayed with him. Jaren dribbled backward. He crossed left. Right. Between his legs. Shifted left. And then back right. He was trying to knock Jax off balance. It wasn't working. Jax was staying with him. Maintaining a near-perfect separation of space. Almost as if they are connected by an invisible thread. Neither player was giving in. Trickery wasn't going to work. Jaren committed. He dribbled right. Jax was right there. Jaren lifted his upper body mid-dribble as if he were going to shoot. But Jax didn't fall for the faint. Jaren pulled backward. He was on the right-hand side of the goal now. He reset, tested the waters with a few more crossovers, and then tried left. Jax followed. Jaren went for it. He picked up his dribble, shifted his feet back to the right, and passed the ball behind his back to his right hand. Jax was prepared. He jumped, ready to block. Jaren jumped and then leaned forward, almost as if he intended to lie down on a soft bed. He extended his arm and flipped the ball up towards the basket with a near-perfect finger roll. Jack's blocking hand barely missed. The ball went in. Jaren won. The ball fell from the net and bounced harmlessly away from the duo. Good game, Jack said first, with his hand extended. Jaren shook his hand. You too. You're good. I haven't had to go that hard against anyone in a while. Same, Jax replied. The two laughed like old friends. It reminded Jaren of the times. He used to laugh with kids he'd known back when he played in this gym all the time. I'd say run it back, Jaren said. But I feel like I'm done, to be honest. Jack suggested they meet for another game sometime. He was from a nearby town and was just visiting his grandmother, but he'd be back periodically throughout the year. As they walked to the sideline to grab their belongings, Jaron explained that he was visiting too and was just home from college for the weekend. Jax asked where he went and smiled when Jaren gave him the name of his school. Jax went to the same college. Wow, Jaren said. We definitely need to meet for another game. The two new friends exchanged phone numbers and started changing into their street shoes. While they gathered their things, 
They talked about their hometowns and their amateur baseball career highlights. Jax and Jaron would probably have played against each other in high school, except Jack's school was bigger and sorted in a different division. They were walking to the parking lot now, basketball shoes in hand and backpacks slung across their shoulders. Jaron promised to text when he got back to school. Jack said he'd reply and they could meet up. Jaron was happy about how today had gone. He made plenty of friends since adjusting to his new school. But the excitement of meeting someone new who he genuinely liked never got old. Jax pulled a keychain from his pocket. I'm this way, he gestured with his free hand. He was pointing in the opposite direction of Jaren's car. Jaren nodded and extended his hand. It was cool playing with you, he said. Next time, you're going to lose again. Jax laughed, shook Jaren's hand, and said goodbye. Jaren drove back to his parents' house, feeling content and relaxed. When he got home, he went straight to the shower. His parents were still out. They'd probably be back in another couple of hours. Plenty of time to wash up and take a nap. The water was hot and refreshing. Nothing compared to a steamy shower with his favorite body wash and conditioner after a hard game. Twenty minutes later, he opened the foggy glass door and climbed out onto a soft bath mat. He dried himself off, massaged a leave-in conditioner through his hair, and put on a styling cap to protect his hair and make sure it wouldn't dry out while he slept. Then, he pulled on his favorite t-shirt and hauled his laundry to his room. Five minutes later, his clothes were put away and Jaron was burrowed deep into his sheets and favorite comforter. He rested his head on his soft pillows and felt so relaxed. For a few blissful moments, before he nodded off, everything was just as it had been when he was still a kid without a care in the world. And with that, he drifted peacefully off to sleep.